Anderson caught everybody flat-footed. I thought Gordon was going to respond quicker to that attack. Hasn't done so yet. She hasn't. You know, Faith Walters dominated her entire heat race and kind of led up towards the end and got past at the very last second. She is one of the fastest skaters out there. It looks like she's putting some pressure on. She's trying to pull away. Uh, she's not trying to pull away, Josh. I think she's doing it. Oh, man. Uh, a couple of seconds now between her and Gurdon. Gurdon with another second on Leha. She's fast. So. Walters, look, she got tired towards the end of her heat race. She needs to hold it together on this one. Two laps to go for the leaders. And Walters, yes, looking back. like you said, she's faltering. She's looking back. Gurdon has She needs to finish strong. Gap. Here we go to the bell. And Gurdon hasn't even started to race yet. There she goes, Cassie Gurdon. Cassie Here Gurdon. comes Jenna. Walters Jenna. could be in trouble for Silver even. Rahal now making contact. Gurdon across the line. And Walters hanging on for Silver. Oh, that woman right there, yeah. Cassie Gurdon, biding her time. You know what the thing about Gurdon there? She didn't panic. She did not panic. There was some separation. Walters was really, really putting pressure on by really opening it up. And same thing happens during her heat race. She dominated, and then she got caught. You know, sometimes when you come from Florida, and you end up in high altitude, Colorado Springs, those lungs start to burn a little bit. Have you take a look at the Faith Walters is a fast, fast skater, though. We we'll take a look at the final time. You see Cassie Gurdon, 254.5. Faith Walters in at 256. Uh, Jenna Rahal just behind, so she almost came in and, and took that silver medal. Jada Parker, Lady Jackson, Binner Cook, Dellinger rounding out the field. So congratulations to Cassie Gurdon. And you mentioned Walter's speed, uh, someone we can definitely look for later on in the sprint race. In the sprint race, she's going to be trouble. Back to the starting line we go, our 12 to 13 year old boys in line, 1500 meter final. Nasir Jackson, Daniel Gill, Andrew Walter, Lucas Kisielek, Tucker Vincent, Ashton Hale, Christian Mendez, and Kai Merhoff. And a clean start once again. And out in front is a kiss early. Really, it's, Vince, it's Vincent out in front first. Nasir Jackson in second. And oh, Daniel Kis Gill in third. Kisielek went down, so he's got some catching and, up to do. But Walter in fourth. Kisielek did go down in the start. No call for a restart, though. As we see there, a double move as Andrew Walter moved into first. And Daniel Gill moved into third. And now Vincent taking first back. Nasir Jackson, who we've seen just absolutely blow away fields all throughout this championship, biding his time. Now he's up there in front. Well, he's impressive. I tell you he what, we, we were watching the awards ceremony from the time trials last night, and uh, for a 10 to 13 year old, Nasir, Jack, Nasir Jackson is yoked, man. He is an athlete to be sure. He looks like, and a lot of these speed skaters are their natural athletes. Their leg muscles are huge. They're at the age now where their bodies are starting to kind of form up, and he's developed some muscle tone already. But these guys are going to shuffle around positions here for a little while until one of them really decides they're going to make a move. And Jackson's going to do it. It's only a matter of when. Jackson will make a move. Looks like he's already starting to lift the pace. But now here's Christian Mendez deciding to take the bull by the horns and assert himself in the race. His move matched by not only Jackson, but also Gill and Walter. As Walter making a big move around the outside. Went from fourth to first there on turn three. Halfway through, it is Walter. Jackson, Gill, Mendez starting to pay the price for that big move he made as he's sliding backwards through the field. You see now there is Tucker Vincent in fourth. It's good to see Kisselet got himself back in the race. Well, he sure did. He's sitting in fifth and closing the gap. It's so impressive. That is impressive. You see Jackson. In front, it looks like he's pushing. starting to chop a little bit faster. Daniel Gill going stride for stride there. And Andrew Walter keeping pace as well as Tucker Vincent. One down. And Daniel Gill is down on the turn to the wall, and that's disappointing for him. Jackson now with a big cushion. Walter and Tucker, uh, excuse me, Vincent, uh, going to have to really push to try to keep up with him here in these final couple of laps. I think Nasir Jackson's probably got uh, this one in the bag at this point unless something uh, catastrophic happens. And there's Nasir with a photo, photo finish there. 
for second between Andrew Walter and Tucker Vincent. We will have to go to the board and see uh, who came out on top of that one. But that man right there yeah, taking control late and just yeah. once again leaving the field in the dust. And you're right, tough break for Gill falling on the third to last lap. Kim was right there, he's looking to make a move. He kept up with those guys the entire time. And then once that happened, that opened it up for Jackson. He just picked up the speed just a little bit and off he went. Yeah, Daniel Gill was going stride for stride with Jackson when he started making that move until he slipped in the corner. Right. So let's take a look at those times. And the final time, Nasir Jackson, he gets the win by over a second. Uh, Walter and Vincent, just a couple of tenths of a second apart, and it is Walter who ends up getting the silver. Ashton Hill, Lucas Kisilek. So Kisilek ends up coming back. He gets fifth, very, very impressive after the early very fall. Uh, Mendez, Merhoff, and then Gill with the late fall, unable to come back from that. And while we have a moment here with uh, this warm up, it's time to talk about the main event the race of champions. We're getting to the division now that's gonna qualify people into the race of champions. This division, a 14 to 16 year old, the top four are gonna get to race in the big, the big show for the money on Saturday night. The 17 to 19 year olds are gonna get four spots. The 20 to 29 year olds are gonna get four spots. And the 30 and above division is gonna get three spots. So 15 racers can escape for the big money. Who do you like coming out of this division uh, as someone who could make some noise? You know, as of right now, I see Justin Stelly. Uh, the guy's considered one of the fastest guys in the country. He's the captain for Team USA. Uh, but he just told me he turned 32. So you got to kind of weigh in the fact that he's in amazing shape. He lives in Salt Lake City, Utah, and trains on ice every single day. So he's in shape. So the fact that he's going to be racing against kids that are 19, 20, 21, that's not going to play a factor into it because he has so much experience that these kids are going to want to try to jump ahead of him, and he's going to pick his time. He's the favorite to win it, but there's going to be some stiff competition out there. So we'll see who comes away in that 18, 19 division. And, you know, the 20 and over, uh, Depending on who shows and who competes, it's anybody's ball game, but Justin Stelly's definitely the fastest guy here. Yeah, on that men's side, there is, of course, Justin Stelly. I'll tell you, Aiden Saylor was very impressive in the time trial. Uh, it's the only time we've had a chance to really see him race. He's in that, uh, that 18 and up division. On the women's side, of course, we got Kelsey Hum and Jasmine Foster. They're both back. That's your one and two winners from last year. Uh, Jalen Godin, who we're about to see race here in this final. Uh, made some noise in that race of champions last year, kind of unexpectedly. So she's got another year under her belt. Uh, you know, it's going to be exciting. I hope everyone at home has made some plans to uh, to join us at usrollerspeedskating.com Saturday night for the Comcast Race of Champions. You know, this event has gotten a lot of respect, a lot of credibility for the, the, the people that show up and compete in it. The quality of skating, there's, US, there's Team USA members out there. There's some of the fastest people in the country. And they got a beautiful wood floor to skate on that just got coated. Some of the lap times these people are dropping are, are very, 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 very fast. So it's exciting to watch. It's really cool if you happen to be in the Colorado Springs area and you want to come actually watch in person. To watch these people battle it out for some prize money uh, is really, really cool stuff. Certainly, as I was here doing some prep work earlier in the week, and I heard one of the skaters when he first arrived to uh, to the arena, he said, "This this floor looks like glass. It's going to be so fast." He was so excited. That was one of the one of our Kentucky Speed uh, team members who, who said that. So so the competitors were excited, and they certainly lived up to uh, to our expectations of of what we can expect to see here in the age groups on day two as we are winding down this. Uh, up session we're going to get to as we mentioned those 14 to 16 year old ladies the 1500 meter final for them and this is basically a fast forward versus team Illini race both of those squads were presented by three skaters fast forward coming all the way from the east coast team Illini from the midwest I mean, this really is an american championship it really is they come from all over you know texas had a, a really good following that came from kentucky there's some florida Obviously Colorado, but they come from everywhere. There's a lot of Kansas City, Missouri. So, you know, uh, Team Infinity has 
25 skaters that came out to the meet this year. That's awesome. It's just great to see new people coming. Uh, just as, even if it's only the second year of the event, uh, the credibility for, for what's going on is people are wanting to keep, keep coming year after year. Staging area headed towards the line. So, in this race, we've got Andy Wincoop of the Fast Forward team, Michaela Rennick, Team Illini, who got the win with that crazy stretch in her heat to qualify. Jalen Godin, Kim Pfeiffer, Gabby Putensberger, the only non Illini or Fast Forward skater to make it to the finals. Kayla Duke and Caitlin Smith. Should be a good one. You know, the, the Fast Forward skaters in there, he were all together. And they pretty much stuck together the entire time until one of them made a move. So, see how things work out. Renick did have that stretch out and was able to pull it. So, in my opinion, these guys and these girls skate against each other so much, it's still anybody's race. Also, I put on my favorite hat in the body of Josh. Right there. Orange t shirt. Best hat of the day. turn it is going to be Jalen Godin out front along with all of the fast forward squad so it is Godin and then Winkoop and then Pfeiffer and tucked in right behind them Gabby Gutensberger she's out there all alone in the middle of the rocket she feels like she probably feels like she's a little outnumbered but she's hanging tough in there and then you got the three Illini skaters right after Yep, the Illini skaters there as well. Gutensberger a bit out of position, trying to make the big move. Oh, trying to get in there. And the fast forward skaters building the wall, not letting blocking her get her, through. Blocking her out a little bit. And back out to fourth, she has to go. Godin coasting along in front. Uh, got the feeling Pfeiffer and Winkoop really, really working together to keep Gutensberger out of the uh, second or third position there. I think that is part of the advantage of being on an actual team and practicing with people multiple times a week. I mean, you know positioning and you know where you're going to be in Steve. Somebody else is trying to make and it. Let's see by the line eye. Michaela Rennick. The Just big run goes fifth to first. Michaela Rennick. Her teammates didn't follow the move, so she's out there alone in front of the fast forward girls. We're about halfway through, and it's Michaela Rennick in front, followed by Winkoop, Gogan, Pfeiffer. And then it's Duke and Smith. And Gutensberger. Still tight enough pack, race. Still tight enough race, though. Anybody can still get in there. Absolutely. Make happen. Seven laps to go. Nobody too far out of it yet. Pace is getting a little bit faster. It is. Rinnick uh, starting to push it a little bit. Probably trying to separate those fast forward girls, see if she can get it to a one on one situation with either Winkoop or Godin. But both of them are staying right with her here through the middle portion of the race. And there's the move, Winkoop's gonna get in front, Godin goes as well. So Rennick now racing third, looks like she is uh, running out of energy, but Winkoop and Godin just away. getting started, pushing the pace here, they're headed for the bell, so a lap and a half to go. It's gonna come down to Wincoop and Godin. They're gonna battle each other here. They are. Let's Godin see it. trying to move around the outside, Wincoop. Let's see it. Cuts her off, Godin. Let's see it. How does she get through there? Oh. She slips up on the last turn. Oh, oh my goodness. I think it's Wincoop. I don't know, I was too close to tell. And I'm standing directly in front of the finish line and that was too close Absolutely to tell. Absolutely incredible, the teammates going toe to toe, literally. Literally. Literally toe to toe to make the finish. And let's see what we have for the result. And it is Wincoop by 
eight, excuse me, 12 one thousandths of a second. Andy Winkler getting the win over Jalen Godin. Uh, Michaela Rennick hanging on for third. Uh, Duque, Pfeiffer, Gutensberger, and Smith rounding out the field. So precious points there for the Race of Champions qualifier uh, for Andy Winkoop as she just clips teammate Jaden Golden. And it looked like Golden was going to go down there for a minute. She held it together and still got another stride in and stuck that foot out. And th I mean, if, you, if it wasn't broken down to that many decimal points, it's a tie. It is. Oh, to the naked eye, we both were looking at it. And it was a tie. And it looks like we have, in fact, a, a second look that we can take at that fantastic finish. Tough to tell still. Absolutely. Frame by frame, even uh, impossible to tell. So thank goodness we have those high-tech timer chips on their, on their feet to, those to things, help us those out. Those things make life so much easier. Situations they certainly do. I know official timer Jason Goss, uh, really happy to have that tool in his belt. Yeah. yeah, because for a referee to try to judge that by the naked eye, anybody would have an argument. Oh, absolutely. So at the line now, 14 to 16 year old men in line 1500 meter final as they get set to go. And uh, now they're going to step back up. Not sure what that was about, but it gives us a chance to give you the roster. David Meyer, wire to wire Meyer, I'm taking the call on him. <laughs> Mason Liebhaber in there as well. Trey Jones, Nathan Rodaway, Trey Tinsley, Ethan Dunham, Graham Hollins, and Nicholas Dagenhart. Uh, very fast times put up by these guys in the heats to qualify. Everybody under two minutes and 45 seconds. And just in some of the heat races, this age group, and some of these guys that are in this final, they've had some amazing races. I mean, they've come down to the wire, too. It's been really fun to watch. The 10 lap was amazing. My ended up taking that one. And it's just, these guys are flying. These kids are really battling out there. They're making moves. But with the 15 lap, somebody's going to have to set the tone. I looked at My Meyer's going to, he, Meyer wants to do it. He might have been the one who jumped there. Could have been Rodaway. I think it was Rodaway myself, but you're right. Both of them looked like they moved a little bit early from the field, so we'll see who catches the yellow card to the face. The yellow card to the face. And a big no-no. But there's no slap on the wrist or anything like that. They're nice about it. No, this is 2019. We don't, we don't do corporal <laughs> punishment in speed skating anymore. Who got it? It right was away. Right away. Meyer's looking for that quick jump, though. You can tell he wants to lead the whole pack. And he looks like a distance guy. Here we go. And a clean start on try number two. And indeed, there he is. Myers out in front, pursued closely by Liebhaber. Myers and Liebhaber wasting no time, pushing the pace. Trey Jones working hard to match him. And there is Rodaway in the fourth. Again, a tight bunch. That Liebhaber, he, he makes moves. You know, he kind of sits back and, and will be in the middle of the pack or towards the front. But then all of a sudden, towards the end of the race, he's always right there. Let's see what kind uh -oh. of tricks he has in store for us there. A lot of contact. Everyone's staying on their feet. Impressive in and of itself. And Liebhaber taking advantage of the situation as Meyer, Meyer uh, awesome. taking it right back. And Rodaway has uh, worked his way up into second position ahead of Trey Jones. But uh, Meyer sensing an opportunity with the bobble that everyone had and is really putting a hammer down here on the field. You know, these guys are such good speed skaters by this point in their careers that even if you just give them a, a skate's footwork worth of space, they can fit through it and make a move and they're gone. And David Meyer certainly gone as we look at those uh, pursuing him, fighting it out for second place. That was Ethan Dunham. Uh, now in second position, pulling ahead of Trey Jones. So Dunham making a move. He was much farther back now, sitting in second as we check back in with David Meyer. The leader, he's halfway home. Trey Tinsley might make a move here soon, too. Quality skater. He knows what he's doing. He made some moves in the initial heat races. And he was looking to make one there. Brown wouldn't let him do it. And Tinsley shut out, but Jones able to get around Dunham. So Jones now sitting second, Dunham third, Tinsley fourth. So a big race for the podium back there as this man has put himself pretty much out of reach. David Meyer, four laps to go. 
and he's out about two and a half yeah. seconds, a quarter of a lap or so on the field. I'm surprised Lee Baber and Rodaway are so far back in this race. They never really recovered from that uh, from that contact from the from the jostling there early on. Well, David Meyer, not quite wire to wire. He did give the, give the lead up briefly for about half a lap, but uh, short of that, he has been in control from the jump. There's his bell. Starting now to overtake and lap some of the competitors is David Meyer cruising to the gold and the big points in the race of champions qualifier and Dunham. Hangs on for second, and uh, Trey Jones, you mentioned him, he made, uh, Trey Tinsley, excuse me, uh, made a move up there and made it to third. I got my trays confused uh, there for a moment, but we can take a look at the official results now. David Meyer, 233. Ethan Dunham, 237. Tinsley uh, right behind with the 237.5, and Trey Jones just outside of the medals with his 238. David Meyer is impressive. You know, he could be one of those young guys that might give some of those older guys fits in that race of champions. He's certainly, certainly a very athletic kid. Uh, clearly knows his own skill level, his strengths. Uh, very good strategically. Sees his opportunities. So I think you might be onto something there. A dark horse uh, competitor a coming out of this young division. Youngsters. You never want to sleep on a youngster. The thing I like about the youngsters in the race of champions is. Uh, they're not scared. They, they're too young to know that they don't have any chance, so they say, well, uh, why not me? As we move on to our 17 to 19 year old ladies division, here we have Jasmine Foster, last year's Race of Champions runner up, Sierra Golden, Kaylee Lepke, and Jaden Turner. So looking for four qualifiers out of this division, so it looks like all four of these ladies are gonna be in that Race of Champions. Uh, barring some sort of injury. So Jasmine Foster, uh, she's, she's amazing. impressive. She's amazing. 20 laps. Here we go. There's a long 20 lap race here. Foster wasting no time, jumping out in front. Followed by Repke and Golden and Turner in fourth position currently, but 20 laps is a long way. Anyone uh, could do, uh, uh, there's really time for two or three moves in a race this there long. There really is. The, the matter is, that if, if you really want to stay in the pack, you can't let him dish it right away. And Turner struggling with that here, just uh, four laps in, as the other three are staying in a tight bunch. Turner dropping a little bit off the pace to the back as we saw Golden there make a move into second place ahead of Repke. Yeah, these girls will just want to keep it close. Because once Jasmine decides she wants to turn it on, they're going to have to do what they can just to keep up with her. And you just see her gradually turn it on. Foster just makes it look so easy. You can't even tell she's skating that much faster than she just was two laps ago, but she is. She certainly is, because uh, Repke and Golden now struggling just to, to keep it close, whereas before they were comfortably keeping pace. Saw a quick look over the shoulder there. Uh, Foster checking in with everyone. She feels Repke right there, so she knows what's going on. It's almost like she just pushed the pace just to see, just to test them a little bit, see what they had. Make them, make them, make them work yeah. to close the gap, as we see Golden now making a move into second position once again. We're halfway through this 20-lap race. And Repke now going to take a turn with the pace making. A brief one, though it was, as Foster decided to regain control uh, pretty quickly there, only about half a lap. These ladies all seem like they're in such great shape. They make it look easy. I mean, 20 laps. That's a long way. It's a long ways to go. It's about 19 more laps than I've got in me, I think. <laughs> I could get three, maybe more. Three or four, all right. 
I need to stop the water halfway through, though. <laughs> so Foster, uh, Repke hanging in there. Golden now starting to fade a little bit. Five laps to go, fourth quarter. Foster and there it up again. goes Foster. You can see the legs driving just a little bit quicker. She's so smooth. Is Repke going to give her a battle? Repke's hanging in there, I think, a lot more than we expected at this point in the race. Just She's a couple a laps to go. Too. And Repke giving as good as she's getting here with Foster. One more. There's the bell Let's see if she for the gets final it. lap. Let's see if she gives her a, a little run for her money. Repke. She One last chance. She looks like she, she wants to make it? the move. She did try to make the move. Uh, Not quite going to have enough, but a very impressive run there from Kaylee Repke. Capturing the silver medal and the points for Race of Champions qualifying. Jasmine Foster getting the win like we expected. But for me, the story of that one is Kaylee Repke uh, going stride for stride yeah. and keeping it close as we see what the time differential was. Uh, yeah. That was quality skating right 15 there. 15 100s. Yeah. Great race yeah, for so Foster Repke. and Repke. That's, that's good to see. They come here for the competition and, and to prepare themselves for, for some things that, you know, one of them's money. They all want to win some money. But at the same time, they all want a gold medal. And that race of champions gold medal is something that's going to be, it's going to start to become real special. A race of champions gold medal and, of course, the prize money, both of those things kind of stepping stones towards Team USA action, it help you I mean, fund your training. It gives, adds to the resume. It adds to the resume, makes it more of a quality summer. Getting some accolades, but Repke was impressive. I like that. I think uh, she's going to be somebody that's going to be a force to be reckoned with. We will certainly see. Uh, up next, we got our men's 17 to 19 year old uh, 2000 meter race. Colton Miller, Zach Stoppelmore, Michael Ruiz, and Skylar Alton in this one. All of these guys skating very fast time trial times, all of them under 11 second laps. Of course, the time trial uh, bears very little resemblance to a 20 lap uh, slog like this, but we know they've got some really serious speed. Looks like they got them all situated. And quick feet off the line for Skylar Alton and Colton Miller. And there taking the inside line was Michael Ruiz. So Ruiz in front early, but those Team Illini boys uh, not willing to sit back and let him set the pace, although Ruiz is going to force the issue. So a lot of movement here in the first couple laps. we got a long way to go, fellas. I was kind of thinking, it. you guys are going to fight over first place at lap 18. You know, it could be one of those long 20 lappers where they just exchange positions the entire time. I can support that. Right now it is Colton Miller out front. Followed by Ruiz, Alton, Stoppelmore in there as well. And there go the two Illini up to the front. Ruiz creating space there in between. A quarter of the way through, and it is Skylar Alton in front. Yeah, they just keep exchanging, and they're going to do that. It seems like all three of them just want to be in front. They all want to be out in front. Is that just so they can set the pace, try to control it? I think so. Because well, one of them wants to get out there, and one of them wants to, wants to pull away. So that's what Miller wants to do. Once he gets out front, he pushes it. Well, it looks like it worked for Miller and Alton because Ruiz now dropped back to fourth. Uh, looks to be... Okay. Having some trouble, he's under pressure, now starting to work his way back in as he moves to third there. And Colton Miller 
In control, yeah. looking over the shoulder, seeing where everyone is. Looks like this might be the move you were talking about. And they've stopped him more, just jumping back into second. And it was like the group of guys before. They see just a little bit of lane, you give them a little bit of space, they take it. These guys seem to be doing their hard crossovers at the apex of the track as opposed to on the, on the first part of the turn. And they're just building up speed into the straightaways. But they're gonna start going a little bit faster. There's five laps left. Yeah, five laps in the fourth quarter of this race now upon us. Colton Miller kind of took charge there about the midway point. Hasn't relinquished the lead since then. Stoppermore though has decided to make a go of it. Nice move in there, big step, and he got inside. Miller trying to go back uh, inside as well, couldn't get around. Now looks like he will on the back straight. Looks like we're down to two. We are down to two with three laps remaining. Exchanging. And they're going to lap Ruiz here at the bell. Stop him more. In control here at the bell. Seems to have caught Miller flat footed and stop him more. And that's all it takes sometimes, just a split second where you can gain a little bit of a lead. And it's over. So he's going to shoot past. Zach Stoppelmore spent the first half of the race firmly in fourth position and coming back in the second half to get the win and the hardware. Let's see what that final time ended up being. And there it is, a 3.24 for Stoppelmore. Colton Miller, the 3.25. Alton and Ruiz rounding things out. So Ruiz went hard early and faded. It could be the altitude. Could be, you know, and some of these guys are Three lap, five laps, their specialty, 20 laps, you know. Sometimes you just don't know how to manage, especially when you're racing against guys who are going fast the whole time. So we'll take a break while our next few races uh, get, get their back. Ah, excuse me about that. We're going to take a break until the next racers are ready to go.
Uh, mic check, mic check. Mic check, mic check, mic check. New headset, mic check. Sports Arena in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Up next, and at the line, you see our 20 and above ladies uh, inline 2,000 meter finalists, Kelsey Hellman, Ashley Hacker, Anissa Beatty, and Hannah Hawley. While they're getting set to go, just want to make a note that both of our 17 to 19 2,000 meter winners, Jasmine Foster and Zach Stoppelmore, set new American Championships records with those times. That's awesome. There's been a lot of records set, and uh, those ones are going to be tough to beat because those are very, very fast times, I'm sure. And, uh, you know, as we do this event year after year, all these records are going to be continuously be broken because some of these people just keep getting better and better every year. Hey, sir, do, we'll see if Kelsey Hellman uh, has a record in her uh, or any of these other racers in the 20 and above division. So Hellman out in front. Hellman, of course, a veteran of Team USA, the reigning Race of Champions winner. And she wastes no time getting out in front of the field here. Still 18 laps to go, though. Yeah, she's, she's going to make this look easy. She's so fast and she's so confident in herself. She's just going to do what she's got to do to get to the main race and do the work. But this will be a nice 20 laps for her. Get used to the floor. Get a good little workout in. Sweat. She's so smooth, but yet she's so powerful in her stride, too. But she's a Team USA veteran. She's one of the fastest women in the entire world. And she's certainly showing it here. Uh, it's just five laps in. And we've got her overtaking Hannah Hawley. Hawley, of course, uh, also competed in the Rookie Challenge, so I don't think there's any surprises for Hannah that uh, uh, one of the all-time greats in the sport is, is making quick work over here in the 20-lap race. You know, it's just part of it. Everybody, Kelsey was a rookie at one point. She was. But she was probably probably has been skating a long time. You see, just inside the shot skating through were our second and third place racers. There they are, uh, Ashley Hacker and Anissa Beatty in a battle for silver. Got a decent little pace going. They do, and it's competitive. Yeah, the, the two fact of them that are going to be coming around. around. They shouldn't let it bother them. Just keep working their race. Could have a little battle for second and third here. Now that's what we'd like to see is those two push each other, uh, go a little bit faster than maybe they expect, get the personal best, uh, still collect the hardware. over the halfway point and Kelsey Hellman out for a leisurely skate. Looks yeah. like she could be on the boardwalk out at Venice Beach or something. Still got a little battle for second and third. See if these ladies are going to pick the pace up a little bit. Seems like they are. The 
the pace of their feet, their steps are certainly increasing in rate. As Kelsey's inside of five laps to go. Kelsey Hellman's across. So we'll pick up that race for second. And there they are up at the top of your screen. You should see them coming back into view here momentarily. There they are. And it is Hacker and Beatty. Hacker with the better of it now. I believe this is their final lap. They finished strong. And they, they did. Hacker uh, getting the silver medal ahead of Beatty. So nice for those two to have each other to compete with uh, and, and push each other a little bit even in the face of the dominance of Kelsey Hellman. There's no shame in that. And Holly's finishing up. And we take a look at our times there. Hellman coming in at 3.34.32. Blazing fast time over 20 laps for her. You see that putting in almost sub 10 second laps. On the last lap was her best lap up there for Hellman. Hacker and Beatty also uh, putting in solid lap times as they come in under four minutes. And Hannah Holly uh, finishing things up right there and we'll see her final time of 440. And Hellman set a record. And that is an American Championships record for Kelsey Hellman. And we'll see if the men uh, can challenge the record set last year in this division as well. The 20 and above men's inline 2,000 meter race featuring Aiden Saylor, Jonathan Blair, Aaron Geddes, and Nick Hoffman. So uh, an Allegro Speed Badger Racing uh, star there in Aiden Saylor, top qualifier out of the time trial. Jordan Blair of Precision Racing, Aaron Geddes of Bell Speed Club out in Indiana, and then Nick Hoffman from Kentucky Speed. And we have a false start. I think it was on Hoffman. Yeah, it looked like it was on Hoffman. He figured it would be a good idea to jump out and try to take the lead right away and set the pace, but a little too anxious. Hoffman's a big guy. Once you get to, once you get get a big body like that moving forward just a little bit, it's hard to stop it and exactly. keep it in control. So exactly. the, the it's also a tough body to pass. It is. It is. He's the he's the Charles Barkley of speed skating. It's he can move though. Uh, so could Charles. That's true. <laughs> so Hoffman tentative after the false start, and Jonathan Blair out in front early. Blair Gettys and. Sailor, one, two, three. This guy's got a steady pace going. We'll see if they exchange positions or if they just kind of want to stay put and then should try to make a move late in the race. Yeah, so far we've seen races go both ways. Uh, sometimes they jockey back and forth in the early going. Uh, we've also seen some very successful competitors just by their time sit back in third or even fourth. And they're pretty much staying just one, two, three. They are, as you take a look at, at Big Nick Hoffman, moving around the track. They're gonna push up to the outside to let the other three through. Jonathan Blair, one of our uh, couple skaters coming in from Georgia, part of that precision racing team in Cummings, Georgia. Okay. We mentioned all the other states that are here. We don't wanna forget our friends out there in uh, the Peach State. So Aiden Saylor now moving into the lead. So there's the first real changeover. Uh, Saylor takes the lead. Gettys into second. Blair now back in third. And it seems like Taylor slowed things down a little bit. And I'm sure there's a lot of skaters that would like to do that too. Slow the pace up. 
and then you make your move toward the end of the race. Because some of these guys, when they get out in front, they just push. Here comes Geddes. And you mentioned there, that's uh, Jonathan Blair making the big move. Sailor slowed it down. Blair, I think, is the guy you were talking about uh, who wants to push the pace early uh, and really punish the competitors, try to make sure they don't have anything left. Sailor able to match the move. Looks like Geddes uh, may fall by the wayside, though. They still got a couple laps to, to try to keep pace with those guys. But yeah, with Blair in the lead, the pace definitely picks up. It did pick up. We saw Sailor try to slow it down, but you see him now taking uh, the pace that Blair is setting and doesn't seem to be bothering him. So uh, the strategy kind of thrown out the window for Sailor. If he was going to slow it down and try to turn it into a late sprint, now he's got to exert the energy to keep up with Blair and keep it close here now as we move into the final quarter of the race. Five laps to go. Here we go. And there's Sailor making the move. Very nice. Now Blair's got a push. Two laps to go. Blair looking for room. Got it. Finds it. Wow. And Sailor right back, contact there. Both skaters throwing their hands up at the bell. Nobody wants to get uh, penalized. Here late and it Somebody will wants be a final push. Blair, looks like he was gonna try to make one more move. He kind of pulled up. I'm not sure if Sailor just held him off or if something was wrong. He saw him reach for that skate uh, kind of before the finish line. Uh, but it is Aiden Sailor. But both of those guys are legit. They know how to race. 20 laps, whether that's their thing or not. Those boys were out there moving. They were. You see their best lap times under 10 seconds. Uh, coming in final times of 3.20 for Sailor and Blair. Geddes in at 3.32 uh, as well. And Hoffman finishing up the race as we speak. So Nick Hoffman with a couple of laps to go. Catch up with him. He was dominant in the rookie challenge, took uh, three of the four gold medals and was in the lead in the final lap of the fourth race until the fall. Uh, crashing into his teammate, Paul Rector III, cost him that one uh, last night. So Nick Hoffman. Stiff competition. Stiff competition. to the line now, uh, 30 and above ladies division, 30 and above division racing a 1,500 meter long race. Our contestants here are Elizabeth Martinko, Shannon Dagenhart, and Brooke Cianciola. This is a 15 lap race, 15 lap for these three ladies. So a clean start, and it is the Infinity Racer, Elizabeth Martinko, jumping out to the quick lead. Looks like her teammate, Shannon Dagenhart, in second, and Brooks Yanciola running in third here in the early going. Martinko in control. 30 and over. There is no record this division and race was not contested last year, so the winner here, uh, certainly in the early going, looks like it's going to be Elizabeth Martinko. She will be setting an American Championships record with whatever time she puts up. Let's see who it is. That is Martinko. Just knocking out these laps. She's got a steady pace to it. Good form, good crossovers. 
She's a third of the way done. Very consistent. Showing a best lap time for Martinko down at 11.3. Her last lap was a 12, uh, 12 flat, so a little bit off of her fastest pace from earlier in the race, but still keeping it up there, keeping the feet moving. Infinity Racing, they're a handful of skaters from Kansas City, Missouri, and then there's also some of the people that are on the Infinity team that are from Springfield, Missouri. Wherever you are, if your rink doesn't have a speed program, get in touch with them, ask them why not. Go to usrollerspeedskating.com, find out what it takes to become a coach and a competitor, get involved. This is fun stuff. And it's a very democratic sport. You know, you don't need to be drafted. Yeah. You don't need to be an elite athlete. Uh, athletes of all levels, we have the rookie division uh, for people that are new. You can come out here and compete on a national stage. And then you got those people who have been doing it for a little while that are getting better and better. And then you got the studs out there. And then there's a handful of skaters that came to the American Championships again that are on the professional level. Yeah, name for me another sport where a rookie like Hannah Hawley can share the track with an all-time legend like Kelsey Hellman. I don't think there's another thing like that. That sort of situation just does not exist. It doesn't. Tinko coming to the bell. One more for her. So one more lap for her. Dagenhart and Sianciola still with uh, about four, four or five laps left to go. So Elizabeth Martinko setting the record. And we check in now with Shannon Dagenhart. So this is an age division that qualifies uh, skaters to that race of champions uh, if they want to compete. And I think uh, Elizabeth Martinko, someone, a, a wily veteran who might be able to make some noise there in the race of champions Saturday night. You know, she just ran a good 20 laps there. Seems like she's in good shape, has a good stride. Could probably turn it on if she was forced to. Yeah, we don't know. We haven't seen what, what she's capable of, uh, clearly, as she utterly dominated this race against much more inexperienced competitors, but against uh, the likes of Jalen Godin, Kelsey Hellman, Jazzy Foster, you know she's going to be able to shave some seconds off that time. Oh, yeah. And the last time across the finish line for Shannon Dagenhart and Brooke Cianciola. Finish things in, f finishing things off for us. So take a look uh, at those times now that everyone is done. And yeah, three minute, basically a three minute flat, 1500 meter for Martinko. Uh, 11 second lap time, very nice. Taking hard, taking the silver. And Cianciola is going to grab the bronze. So up next, we got our 30 and above men's uh, inline 1500 meter race. Uh, this one going to feature, uh, you mentioned, uh, the Team USA member Justin Stelly, Terry Fletcher from Central Florida Speed. Those are our two heat winners to qualify. Eddie Wilcox, Jared Geddes, Tim Clark, Sonny Wright, Adam Hudek, and Markevis Humphrey. Uh, Humphrey racing under the shadow of that false start. Uh, so he's got to be careful at the start. Tim Clark, he's a local Stallions racer. Tim Clark is an Arvada Avenger, up in, uh, based out of the Denver area. He's been around for a long time. Actually, it looks like... It does look like we've had some Humphrey, scratches. Humphrey's a scratch. Yeah. Don't see Humphreys out there. Uh, I do see Sonny Wright. I do see Jared Geddes. I do see Eddie Wilcox and Terry Fletcher. And I do see Justin Stelly. So five men instead of the eight we thought we were going to see. 
And it is Eddie Wilcox out in front in the early going, followed by Fletcher and Wright. We'll see what Stelly does. He's going to hang back in fifth and let these guys do their thing. I'm sure he'll make a move at some point. 15 laps. Justin Stelly, our top qualifier, having won heat number one. Uh, but he is hanging back, just biding his time back there in fifth possession, position, letting Wilcox and Fletcher and Wright do most of the work. Jared Getty's in there as well in fourth. We're a third of the way through this one. Stelly now starting to look just a little restless back there. Gonna jump up into third place. Uh, just a pit, just a touch and go there in third, trying to move up even farther. Makes and Stelly's gonna get into second. I didn't see the space for him to get in there, but he found it as Wilcox moves back into third, and there goes Stelly to the front. So Stelly and Wilcox making a nifty move into a tight window as well. So Stelly, Wilcox, Fletcher, and Wright. Right on the outside of the line, having to do the extra work. There you go, give him a little push. But it pays off, so right on into bronze medal position in front of Fletcher, Stelly, Wilcox, and Wright. Now running one, two, three. Terry Fletcher hanging in there as well. Let's see if Stelly decides to push here. And Sonny Wright's looking for a little room, and Wilcox wasn't allowing that. Three laps, uh, three laps to go. See if he makes a move again. Stelly has raised the pace slightly, but not to the level that we know he can. Now here he goes, it looks like. Spreading things out. Stelly on the move. Wilcox and Wright. Not going to be able to catch up. There's the bell up. So Wilcox and Wright running out of room to catch Stelly and Stelly across the line first, Wilcox second, Wright third. So a nice race by those three guys. We take a look at the final times. Justin Stelly coming in at the two, four, three. Eddie Wilcox pushing it there at the end. His last lap was his fastest. And Sonny Wright, uh, 244, 677 to take bronze. Jared Geddes and Terry Fletcher uh, rounding things out for us in that one. 30 and over. That's why I next up. 40 and over women. It is indeed. 40 and over women and men. Gonna take a quick warm up. While our 40 and over contestants roll around and get loose for their race, we're gonna head down to the trophy room for our first medal presentations of the day. Oh, in third place, Come fast forward, Mr. Jake Brown. And in second place from Infinity Racing, Brentley Berg. Hey, congratulations. And in first place from fast forward, Fermi Gordepe. Broken arm and all. How much longer did you have there? Uh, in third place from Claremore Chaos, Brindley Hines. Woo! Congratulations, Brindley. I met your mom and dad before you. <laughs> and in second place, from Claremore Chaos, Claire Pilkington. Claire, congratulations. You were awesome. You did a good job. 
And in first place from fast forward with a new record time, McKenna Luther. That's one giant step there, huh, McKenna? Very nice race and congratulations. Very nice ladies, okay, nice smiles. back as our 40 and over competitors uh, <coughs> finish warming up and they'll be ready to go. meter race, 10 laps around. Uh, lady competitors, Stephanie Baker, Jamie Smith. Oh, well, we got Sherry Rodaway out. It is, I thought that was Sherry Rodaway I recognize. So a late ad, Sherry Rodaway. Uh, we've seen a lot of Sherry's son, Nathan, uh, here today and expect to see a lot more from him. So Sherry Rodaway is going to strap the skates on and get a few laps in here in the 1,000 meter race. First, Jamie Smith, followed by Rodaway and then Baker. All three of these racers, Stallions speed members here in the local Front Range, Colorado area. Stallions a great program put on by the local skating rink, Skate City, all throughout Colorado Springs and Denver. And you know, we even have uh, Jamie Smith, who's in first place right now, uh, as a team out in the Grand Junction area. That's right. Don't forget the Western Slope when you think Colorado. True. Grand Junction, Fruta, Cedar Edge, Montrose, Durango. They got rinks out there, and that's where they skate. Right away has got a nice little steady pace going for the 40 and over ladies out there. She does. She took over the lead just a bit ago. And now Stephanie Baker taking a turn doing the pace making. Halfway through. All three of these are very really evenly matched. So everyone out there is taking a turn, uh, setting the pace. Jamie Smith looks like she wants to control things here as we wind towards the finish. So two laps to go. I'd love to see these ladies just start getting after it with 40 and over. And we'll see. Two laps to go. And there is a big move. Stephanie Baker she's starting to push. things up. She certainly is. Sherry Rodaway looks like she's going to go with. There's the bell. And there's the bell. Oh, Baker and then the right away. Stephanie Baker. Oh, yeah. See if we can break last year. And it's going to be Baker to the line first, right away in second, and Jamie Smith grabbing the bronze after a fast start. Next up, we're going to get one of those final times where they came in at. Uh, 215 for Baker, 216 for right away. 
And uh, 220 for Smith, so. Yeah, the 40 and over ladies, in. they're steady out there. Yeah, good job, good race. Uh, that one, that could be a competitive division here in the next couple of races as we move uh, through our uh, American Championship individual age group finals. Sure can. And we move on to the 40 and over men's division. Another 1,000 meter race. 10 laps for Andrew Holland, Dan Baglieri, Brent Merhoff, Brian Smith, Mike Shepard, John Honendell, John Esterline, and Jason Metcalf. Uh, looks like he was a late scratch. So Metcalf scratching, and that's too bad. Metcalf uh, put up a very impressive time trial. Uh, we saw him do well in some of the heats for the shorter races, so I hope he's all right. And just taking a chance to rest up for those shorter race races that are more his specialty. It's 40 and over division. Sometimes you got to pick and choose the races you're going to do. sound effects they put out there uh, on a false start especially yeah yeah and it doesn't matter how old you are you still get the yellow card to the face right to the face and in this particular case it's going to be mike shepherd the fast forward skater who gets the card Second try. Ooh, a little contact coming around the second time. in front to the at the beginning is Brenton Merhoff. Getting around in front of the contact. Merhoff now giving up the lead to boys. Jason Metcalf did decide to race. Came in late. Snuck in there on us and he's out in front. So good for Jason Metcalf. Make Metcalf and Merhoff say that five times fast. There are two leaders at the moment. And you know Metcalf was out there reffing, so I don't know if he was, if that maybe postponed him getting his stuff on or how that worked. But he's also an official here for the American Championships. Uh, I could explain why we didn't see him there uh, before. He was maybe doing a quick change and getting ready to put his uh, racing suit on. He's got good form though. So he's setting a good space. He is setting a good pace. Uh, Merhoff right there with him. Those two are uh, oh, yeah. the class all their own yeah, they're uh, here in this one. Over halfway done. And there's Metcalf and Merhoff. Third place back behind him currently held by John Honendell. As Metcalf now starting to put some distance on Merhoff. Metcalf coming to the bell. There's the bell for Jason Metcalf. 40. So it's going to be gold for Texas Speed in the form of Jason Metcalf, 40 and above champion. Merhoff in the third. And there you see John Honendale crossing the line in third position. As the rest of our competitors finish up their race, let's take a look at those final times. Metcalf, 143.8. Merhoff, 147. And Honendale in at 150.5. It's good to see that some of these skaters are still they're just in amazing shape. Metcalf made that look easy. He did. 40 and above, still getting out there doing laps. And there's a record. And it's a new record for Jason Metcalf, getting his name in the book. Nobody can take that away from you until next year. That is true. Once you make the finals, they can't. Sometimes <laughs> you set it in the prelim That's and true. somebody beats you in the final. Or in the time trial, even worse, we had true. a couple times the record was set uh, in the 
set by racer number three and broken by racer number five, so they had the record for approximately you know, 47 seconds. <laughs> but in the final, the race records are safe for a year. As we look at our 50 and above ladies, two competitors here for the 1,000 meter race, Tammy Hutto of Champions Speed. Champions. And Patricia Laser, fast forward. 10 laps. 10 laps. And right off the line, Laser. Ladies out there just doing their thing. Laser's got good form. You can tell she's probably been speed skating for quite some time now. She's a veteran. Well, if I remember correctly, she's on the coaching staff of that fast forward team. I believe I had learned that last year. So, Makes yeah, sense. Patricia Laser, uh, a speed skating uh, fixture for a long time out there in, in the Chesapeake Bay area. And uh, now here at the American Championships, uh, both coaching and skating. And of course, her, her young skaters have had a lot of success here both in the Rookie Challenge and in the age group races. And then they have some of the fastest people in the country that are a part of their program, so obviously she knows what she's doing. That is correct. You commented on the forum, uh, the, the woman who taught Jazzy Foster and Kelsey Hellman how to skate probably uh, knows a bit about forum. <laughs> Two laps to go for Laser. See up there, Tammy Hutto doing her thing as well. And there's the bell for Laser. And that's what's cool about the American Championships, the 50 and over, the 40 and over. I mean, you have some of these people that just love speed skating. It doesn't matter how good of a skater you are, if you're brand new or you've been doing it forever. There's a division for you, no matter what your skill level or age is. That is correct. We even have a 60 and over division. No one contesting that this year on the women's side, but we do have a men's race. So 60 and over. Oh, skating's been proven to be an incredibly healthy uh, activity uh, it, over the entire course of your life. It really is, and especially, you know, once you have gotten past your prime and the competitive nature really isn't that big of a deal anymore, skating's still some of the best exercises you can do. People don't want to run on treadmills or go into the gym where it's packed and you're throwing weights around and it's uncomfortable. Skating's one of the healthiest things that you can do for your heart next to walking. You burn so many, you burn three times as more many calories just skating in a public session than you would go into the gym. That's a lot of calories. It is. Especially if you actually work hard at the gym. I'm more, I'm more of a, I'm more of a rest between reps guy. Yeah. I like to stretch that out as long as I can. Yeah. Uh, as Tammy Hutto finishing up her run. We'll take a look at what those final times were for Laser and Hutto. And Patricia Laser coming in with a 211. So very nice time there. Some good laps, getting down under 13 for her best lap. And Tammy Hutto going to take the silver in that division. So up next is our 50 and above men's inline 1,000 meter final featuring Daryl Hunter, Jim Bourgeois, Chuck Boucher, and Chris Daig. And a clean start for these four gentlemen. Out in front 
And at the beginning is Hunter. So Hunter, Boucher, Bourgeois, Day, all right together. And now a move coming from Boucher. Picking the pace up a little bit. See if the guys want to keep up. Looks like they do. Certainly Daryl Hunter does as he takes the lead. Nice pass made. Boucher back on top. These guys all look better than me. They all got good form. They pass well. They gain speed. They cross over at the apex, but then they're gaining speed on the straightaways. And they're 50 and over the division. It's a tight race. It is. All four guys right together. We're over halfway through. See if someone get somebody to start pushing it a little bit. Looks like Chuck Boucher is going to be that guy or Daryl Hunter. Now with the lead. Could come down to it. And good pace still set. Hunter here's the bell in first place. Bourgeois directly behind him from Champion Speed Club. Bourgeois is going to make a move. Is Hunter going to try to catch him at the finish line? We got us a race. 50 and over, guys. Do not disappoint. Photo finish. We'll have to check out the times on that one between Hunter and Bourgeois. And Jim Bourgeois comes back with the win. Daryl Hunter second, Chuck Boucher third place, and Chris Deegan fourth. And that is your 50 and over 1,000 meter. And the 50 and over just delivered. Those guys were out there racing, all veterans, and great sportsmanship, high fives and hugs. Follow up. If you guys want to have one more look at a photo finish, for the 50 and over 1,000 meter, let's take a look. And there it is, Bourgeois got him by a wheel. You can see Bourgeois there, it's about a wheel, maybe half a wheel. So a tremendous race in the 50 and over division. They deliver. The 50 and over just got everybody all riled up in here. And they were lead in for our 60 and over. It was a race that uh, originally was supposed to have feature two skaters, Mark Thornton and Brian Geddes. No sign of Mr. Geddes, so Mark Thornton out there on the track. He's going to make, uh, make 10 circuits around and collect his gold medal. And, you know, good for him. You can never take that away from the guy. Came to a national event. And they could even, I mean, the, the pace he's setting right now. I think if you compete with those, uh, throw, throw him in the 50 in. That's right. He's 60 and above, he's still above 50, so he's, he qualifies in the 50 and above division. You would never be able to tell he's 60 and above. Absolutely Look at him. not. You know, speed skating is one of those sports. If you take pretty good care of your body, you really can do it forever. It's not like golf, per se, where it's not as physically straining on your body, but if you consistently go to practice and you stay in decent enough shape and maybe change your diet up a little bit, who's to stop you when you're 65 coming out here doing 10 laps and you're still going under two and a half minutes? That's yeah. very impressive. He's definitely on pace for well under two and a half minutes. That's 112, and he's six laps gone. So he's on pace for, actually, he's going to be right around two unless he really takes his foot off the gas, which is always a danger when you're racing by yourself. No one to push you. You've got to stay very focused true. mentally to try to keep, uh, you know, self-motivation. Very true. What it takes. Even on the last lap, 
getting a round of applause from the crowd, finishing strong, 60 and over. That was your participant for the American Championships. So Mark Thornton, you see the time there. He did, in fact, get real close to that, too. That's an American Championship record. You just heard the buzzer. That's a record. Nobody's going to take that from Mark. That record or his gold medal. So congratulations to Mark Thornton of Champion Speed Club. So we are going to take a short break while uh, our uh, competitors warm up for the short track sprint finals. The shortest distances will be coming up, but before we do that, we're going to head back down to the trophy room, starting with our eight and nine year old girls long final medal presentation. Final in third place from Infinity Racing, Brooklyn Dury. Congratulations. In second place from the Roll Arena Rockets, Lainey Ringgold. And in first place from Fast Forward, Sadana Gannison. In third place from Fast Forward, we have Aiden Knowles. In second place from the Roll Arena Rockets, Sean Cook. Woo! Nice jump there, Sean. Good job, you missed it right there. Good job. And in first place, unattached, is Xavier Cosme. Nice racing out there today, Pam. Good job. Good job. Nice spot, actually. That's X-Man up on the top, if I remember correctly. From Infinity Racing, Sage Meek. Awesome. Yay. Every day a skater. Awesome job. Congratulations. In second place from Olympic Speed, Marissa Hawley. Congratulations, great job. It's getting. And in first place from champions, Zana Nash. Zana. Zana Nash. You can smile anytime, Zana. In third place from Claremore Chaos. Dax Pilkington. In second place from Olympic Speed, Ben Unsicker. And in racing, first, we did it long enough. Hmm. You know, we'll get it right. Congratulations. In first place from Bell Speed Club, Braden Jones. Congratulations. 
In second place from Fast Forward, Andrew Walter. And in first place from Fast Forward, Nasir Jackson. Big step, buddy. Yeah, thank you again. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Great job, guys. That was awesome. I think I watched your race too. It was a good race. He's in line 1500 meter final. In third place from Team Illini, Michaela Rennick. <laughs> In second place from Fast Forward, Jalen Godin. And in first place from Fast Forward, Andy Winkoo. <laughs> <laughs> big smile, girl, big smile. <laughs> I mean, her final in third place from Texas Speed Club, Trey Tinsley. Woo! <laughs> Go, Trey! Hey, congratulations. In second place from Team Illini, Ethan Dunham. Woo! Way to go, son. Congratulations, buddy. And in first place, also from Team Illini, David Meyer. Way to go, other son. What you all, <laughs> <laughs> all first sons up there. David Meyer Dunham. What are y'all putting your watch? Trey Tinsley <laughs> Dunham. <laughs> Woo! Congratulations. You were still asleep this morning. In second place, from Allegro Speed, Kaylee Repke. And in first place from Fast Forward, Jasmine Foster with a new record. Inline's 2,000 meter final. In third place from T Bellini, Skyler Alton. In second place from T Bellini, Colton Miller. Yeah, you were. Congratulations. And in first place from Fast Forward, Zach Stoppelmore. Zach, when did you know you were going to win? So what? When did you know you were going to win? Remember? I'll get it right then. Right. When I get the line? That's, That's right, when I crossed the line. line. Congratulations. Sure. Got here just in time, yeah. <laughs> Bell Speed Club, Anissa Abedi. Yeah. Oh, oh my gosh. I've got a this time. <laughs> <laughs> She's not well. In second place from Team Illini, Ashley Hacker. Thank you. Congratulations. And in first place with a new record from Fast Forward, Kelsey Hellman. Is that your record you broke? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what was it before, do you know? I don't know, I can look it up for you. Thank you. Okay, nice smile, ladies, good pictures. In third place from Bell Speed Club, Aaron Geddes. <laughs> In second place from Precision Racing, Jonathan Blair. And in first place with a new record of from Allegro Speed, Aiden Saylor. Is that your record you broke too? These Christians in it. Oh, you're Christians. You're welcome, man.
So congratulations to all of our medal winners. We have a lot more hardware to give out, and we are going to keep the finals rolling with our 5-7 to seven girls in line 200-meter race. That coming up when we return. Welcome back, everybody. More racing to come was promised, and now here it is, as we have our five to seven girls, 200 meter inline final. This race is gonna feature Claire Pilkington, McKenna Luther, Bentley Hines, Elena Garber, Cesaria Cooper, and Janiya Washington. So, 
six skaters going to compete in this one. It's a very, very fast race. Only two laps around the track. Uh, as we see, we got some officials talking things over. Looks like they start on our first try out there on the outside number I believe it's helmet number 295 Janiah Washington who is guilty of the false start so she's going to get the yellow card to the face And, and second start is clean. And out in front is McKenna Luther. So McKenna Luther, excuse me, is in second as it's Claire Pilkington. That was the bell lap, so these two are in a drag race to the finish. Pilkington and Luther. Pilkington and Luther to the line, and it's going to be Pilkington by just about a full stride. Pilkington uh, and Luther coming in one and two, and we'll take a look at those times here. And that is, I believe, a new record for the American Championship set there by Claire Pilkington. 25, 6, 4, 3, and you see McKenna Luther. Coming on strong with that very fast, fast last lap, but it wasn't enough. She will take silver. Brindley Hines coming in for third. On to the five to seven boys, 200 meter race. Premi Gawadipe, Brindley Berg, and Jake Brown in this final and a false start this time i think it was out on the outside once again you see berg there he does what i do what i do you left early brentley can't do that it actually doesn't look like it was brentley looks like it was jake brown so Jake Brown, the fast forward skater in the middle with the false start. He had a, a false start in the long distance race as well. And on the restart, uh, it, it affected him. He, he got a slow start and never did really recover. Ended up taking the bronze in that one. So hopefully this time. So hopefully this time, Brentley will not, <coughs> excuse me, that was uh, Jake Brown, will not be uh, discouraged and slowed down as much by the false start. And a clean start this time. And once again, Brown slow off the line after the false start and Premi Galadipe. Lap one. Gawadipe well ahead in control once again. It's Plumi Gawadipe. He's to the line for gold. Grinleyberg for the silver and Jake Brown taking bronze as we take a look at those final times. Gawadipe in. At 27 to 707, Berg, and then Brown, rounding out the field with the bronze medal. So that leads us to our next race.
the eight to nine year old girls in line 300 meter final. Sadana Ganasan, Brooklyn Duray, Felon Janjevic, and Laney Ringold. And this one. As well as a few others. And it's Ganasan out in front. Ringold and Duray. Ganasan. Out in front, Duray in second, Ringgold third. This is the bell for Ganasan. Ganasan, Duray. Ringgold evenly spaced the top three. There goes Sadana. And a nice stretch there. Ganasan in for second gold medal of the day. And we'll take a look at the final numbers. So Ganasan with the 33-5-9-2. Duray coming in 34-4-4-4. And now we're back to the finish line, the start finish line for our next race. Our eight to nine year old boys. Eight to nine year old boys. Todd Crawford, Aiden Knowles, Casey Starkey, and Thomas Winfield. So Crawford and Knowles are semifinal winners. Starkey and Winfield in second. Starkey racing with a false start. And that could be trouble as we have another false start here. If it's on Starkey, he is done. Don't think it was from him way on the outside. So we are underway. Three laps, one almost down, and it is Knowles and Crawford in first and second. Aiden Knowles got a great jump off the line and still holding. Aiden Knowles. see his final time. Aiden Knowles coming in at 33 seconds. 34 for Crawford in second and 35 for Winfield as he takes Braun Starkey. Gonna finish in fourth. And we move on our 10 to 11 year old girls. These ladies in the 10 to 11 age division skate a 500 meter race. Five laps in this one for Marissa Hawley, Alicia McBride, Madison Repke, and Sage Meek. in front in the early going Holly chased by Madison Repke and Sage Meek uh, Alicia McBride not able to race here as she suffered an injury in a qualifying heat earlier today so it's just these three Holly Repke and Meek Holly in complete control of this one. Uh, Meek now in second. So Meek and Repke with a bit of a race for silver. As you see there, Holly taking the bell. And there's the stretch for 
Holly Meek ending up in second position and Madison Repke taking bronze as all three of these ladies gonna head down to our trophy room and step up on the podium. Holly in at a 52-6, Meek 55-064 and Repke 56-412. Next, our 10 to 11 year old boys, 500 meter inline final. Braden Jones, Braxton Jester, Ben Hunsiger, and Dax Pilkington. Clean start from the inside, it's Jester. Braxton Jester out in front after a great start. The start's so critical on these short distance races. Hunsiker now in second, and Dax Pilkington in third. So Hunsiker now making a move on the inside. He's up to first place. Hunsiker running ahead of Jester and Pilkington. It's a three-man race for gold. Here's the bell, Hunsaker looking to hold off Jester and Pilkington. Half a lap to go, final turn, last chance to make moves. Does anyone have it? Jester reaching out with the skate, but still a lot, a stride behind Hunsaker as we take a look at how close those times were. Hunsaker finishing. Three one hundredths in front of Jester Pilkington in there, just about a tenth of a second behind for bronze and Braden Jones rounding things out. So there's our 11, uh, 10 to 11 year old divisions, and we're going to have uh, 12 and 13. Year old girls in line next, 12 to 13 year old age division also skating in the 500 meter race. You see some of those con competitors warming up as we speak. And it's been a great day of racing already. And we're gonna run back down to our trophy room for the 30 and above and 40 and above award ceremonies for the long race. In second place from Infinity Racing, Shannon Degenhart. <laughs> and in first place from Infinity Racing, Elizabeth Martinko. In third place from the Stallions, J.B. Smith. And second place from the Stallions, what? Sherry Rodeway. And in first place from the Stallions, Stephanie Miller. Inline's 1500 meter final in third place from Infinity Racing, Sonny Reif. That was an excellent race too, guys. Really it's was. Good good and in second place from Fast Forward, Eddie Wilcox. <laughs> and in first place from Team Illini, Justin Stelly. Right. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Great. So, congratulations to all our winners in the 30 and 40 year old age divisions in our long race finals. We'll be back with more short race finals after this.
staying with us through that short break, a little bit of a warm up period for some of our contestants. And now on the line, we have our 12 to 13 year old girls, five 100 meter inline final competitors. Faith Walters, the winner from Heat One. Jada Park, the winner from Heat Two. Cassie Gurdon got second place in Heat One. And Taylor Cook took second place in Heat Two. And that is how these four ladies came to be here in our final for the 500 meters. Some last final checks with our starting official, and we'll get this one underway. Are we have to ace that test? Yeah. And we are underway here in the five lap sprint. As out in the front here in the early going is Cassie Gurdon. So Gurdon in front, Walters behind her. And running third for the moment is Taylor Cook. There are your top three. Yeah, and we had a crash there. Walters going down hard and the officials gonna blow this one to a halt. Faith Walters down along the wall there. And we will take a short break while our officials and medical staff make sure that Faith is doing okay. You can hear the round of applause as you see there Faith Walters making her way off the floor. She hard crash into the wall, still in some pain, but looks like she's mostly okay. And we are gonna move on in the program, so we'll loop back around and get that 12 to 13 girls 500 meter final finished in a moment. And right now we're gonna do our 12 to 13 year old boys 500 meter final. It looks like you see there Nasir Jackson milling around along with Christian Mendez. Mendez skating with a false start over his head. So he needs to be careful not to jump the gun here in the final. One false start for him would lead to disqualification. And there's Clayton White skating off your screen. He finished second in heat number two, which is why, uh, how he made it to this final race. As you can see, the competitors continuing to mill around. Andrew Walter 
Actually, he got advanced to the final after a fall in the heats that was deemed to have uh, deprived him of a chance to qualify. So by rule, he gets the opportunity to skate here in the final. So we're gonna have five competitors here. We've covered most of them. Joining the ones we've talked about is Lucas Kisielek. You see him there in the red Badger State racing uniform. As the officials and timers still making sure that they're all set up to leapfrog a race by not running the, the girls 500 in its scheduled spot. That can sometimes mess with the, uh, the timer's file. Uh, take a pan around. You can see there uh, one of our medical staff here at the uh, American Championships just wiping up the floor one last time before we get uh, race action back underway. And to the starting line we go. start called the sprint races are the most likely to generate false starts because the start is just so important here in the short race and that one is going on Kisielek so the yellow card to the face for the Badger State racer Uh, clean start on the second try. Nasir Jackson pumping the feet, sprinting out of the block, and he is in an early first place. Andrew Walter in second, and Kisielek sitting in third. Nasir Jackson, though, pumping the arms, gliding around the corner, just building on his lead, lap over lap. Both of his laps have gotten faster as he is now out over a second ahead. Of Walter and Kisielek. So Jackson cruising towards yet another gold medal. There's the bell for Nasir Jackson. And it is going to be Jackson to the finish. Jackson followed by Walter and Kisielek. So Andrew Walter. Uh, clearly deserving of the opportunity to race here in this final as he comes in second place behind Nasir Jackson about three quarters of a second off the pace and that is a new American Championships record for Nasir Jackson five laps in 49.620 so averaging less than 10 seconds per lap was Nasir Jackson as we head back to the starting line for our 14 to 16 year old ladies division 500 meter final. This one gonna feature Jalen Godin, the winner of semifinal one, Gabriela Cardona Castro, the winner of semifinal two, Andy Wincoop finished second in semifinal one, and Kayla Duque who finished second in semifinal two. So a couple of fast forward racers and the infinity racer in Cardona Castro. She's had a pretty good day today. Racing well, contact around the first turn 
as Godin gets the better of that. Moving quickly, staying in front of Cardona Castro and Wincoop in third. Now Cardona Castro looking for Rue, can't find it. Godin holding her off. Castro continuing to press the issue, slides through on the inside. Nice move there around the corner. Cardona Castro. Some serious racing there between her and Godin. So Gabriella Cardona Castro now looking for the bell. Godin right on her tail. They right together and Godin going to slide in front. Cardona Castro, one last chance to make a move. This is where she made the move last time. Not this time. And Godin going to reach forward with the skates. She picks up the win and some valuable points in the race of champions qualification competition as you see our top two finishers skating there and now you see their times godin a 50 919 cardona castro 51 3 8 and andy wincoop rounding things out on the podium with the 52 144 kayla duque also a very respectable time and moving right along in our finals program, the short races continue. Uh, this one featuring Wire to Wire Meyer, Mason Liebhaber, and then the trays, both Tinsley and Jones. start and right from the jump as we've seen so many times today David Meyer in front Liebhaber giving chase the Joneses back battling for third excuse me the Trey is back battling for third Jones currently holding it Meyer Liebhaber Jones and Tinsley halfway through this one it is once again Meyer David Meyer Mason Liebhaber Trey Jones now making contact with him. He's going to be a factor. He doesn't want to settle for third. Wants to take a shot at silver or even gold. Trey Jones, Trey Tinsley is there as well. Jones and Liebhaber making contact. David Meyer out in front of them all. Looks like he's going to hold on. Liebhaber as well. And it is Trey Jones comes in for the bronze. And once again, that's why they call him wire to wire. He led the entire race, and he is excited. So more precious race of champions points for David Meyer. Take a look there, Meyer, 48, 808. Everybody turning in very fast lap times as Liebhaber comes in second, and Jones uh, just back for bronze. Trey Tinsley rounding out the field. And it looks like we are getting set to rerun our 12 to 13 year old girls in line 500 meter final. see down there Cassie Gurdon telling our PA announcer to let that breathe. Digging the music they're playing here inside the Xfinity Roller Sports Arena. mentioned it before, but once again, while we have a moment, the 12 to 13 uh, inline final winner, Nasir Jackson, setting yet another record here at the American Championship. So Nasir Jackson putting his stamp on the record book here in 2019. And we are now ready to go. 12 to 13 year old girls, Faith Walters, uh, unable to 
finish the race and she was the reason that the first run was called off. So we are down to three competitors. We got Jada Parker there from Texas Speed Club. Cassie Gurdon from Allegro Badger State. And Taylor Cook from Infinity. getting this one set to rerun. Looks like we are now ready to run our 12 to 13 girls 500 meter inline final. And we're gonna get a false start. Taylor Cook looks like she thinks it's her, but I actually think Jada Parker moved first. So we'll see who the officials give the yellow card to. And it is <laughs> it is Jada Parker. You see Cook, pretty excited that it wasn't her. She thought for sure she went early. Uh, but it is Parker who left even earlier. And she gets the yellow card to the face, indicative of a false start. And Cassie Gurdon off the line quickly. Cassie asserting herself on lap number one. Cook in second. Parker currently racing in third. Gurdon once again out uh, in front, extending the lead. Just a couple laps to go now. Gurdon up about a half second on Cook. Taylor Cook. Needs to go if she wants to make this one close. As here's the bell for Cassie Gurdon. And Cassie Gurdon coasting home for the gold medal. Taylor Cook gonna grab silver and Jada Parker gets the bronze as we take a look at the final times for everyone, Cassie Gurdon, 53.629, Cook, 55.022, and Jada Parker, 55.863. And we head back to the starting line. It's our 17 to 19 year old ladies 500 meter final. Jasmine Foster there on the inside. Sierra Golden, Kaylee Repke and Jaden Turner. All four of these competitors looking to punch their ticket to the Comcast Race of Champions. Foster, of course, was our Race of Champions runner-up at the 2018 American Championships. The inaugural Race of Champions and a clean start here. Foster out in front, Golden tucked in right behind. Repke after that and Turner coming up the rear. So Golden looking to keep pace. Foster. Long strides, smooth around the turns. Jasmine Foster 
And there's a nice move, Repke sliding in front of Golden. So Repke now in second as Foster has two laps to go. Repke trying to hang on to her, give herself a chance to make a move late. Jasmine Foster at the bell. Foster, Repke, Golden. And Jasmine Foster in for her second one of the afternoon. Kaylee Repke in second, Sierra Golden third. And you take a look there at the times. Jasmine Foster, 50.2, half a second on Repke and Sierra Golden coming in 51-1 for bronze. Our 17 to 19 year old men's inline 500 meter final coming at you next. Colton Miller there in the foreground of Team Illini. Zach Stoppelmore from Fast Forward. Michael Ruiz from Texas Speed Club and Skylar Alton of Team Illini. Stoppelmore took gold in the long distance race just about, oh, maybe an hour ago. Hopefully you had a chance to watch it. If not, we're glad you're here now. And we are underway in the five lap sprint. Out in front, Stopplemore and Miller. Miller now passing Stopplemore. Stopplemore has got the inside line. Gonna try to get back in front and does. Little bobble there for Miller. Stopplemore and Miller. Three laps to go. It's a two man race for gold. Stopplemore hanging on to his lead. But Miller looking for an opportunity. Not gonna find it there. There's the bell. Stoppelmore and Miller still one, two, very close. Final turn. Miller looking for room. It's gonna be a drag race to the finish. And that is gonna be a really, really close. Not sure who won. Miller tried to stick his foot out there. But it looks like it is Stoppelmore. Three one hundredths of a second, Stoppelmore over Miller. Alton coming in third and Ruiz rounding out the field. And we're gonna take one more look at that finish, slow motion. I apologize, we don't have a look at that finish just yet, but what we do have is some awards, so we will head back down to the trophy room. Allegro Speed, Tucker Vincent. In third place from the Stallions, J.B. Smith. And second place from the Stallions, Sherry Rodeway. And in first place from the Stallions, Okay, we're ready to award the 40 and above men in lines 1,000 meter final. In third place, from Olympic Speed, John Hanadel. In second place, from Team Velocity, Brent Merhoff. Good job. Thank you. And in first ladies in lines 1,000 meter final. In second place from champions, Tammy Hugo. Good job. Thank you. Congratulations, Tammy. Stick it up there and run for roses. And in first place from fast forward, Patty Leaser. 
Thank you. I'm Kelly. I hit the camera. Yeah, nice With a new record? Yeah, she does have a new record. <coughs> Did you break your own shade? Good job, Chuck. Hey, brother. And in second place from Texas Speed, Daryl Hunter. In first place with a new record from champions, Jim Bourgeois. Right. That's right. Thank you know, Smith, that's all I hear about. He <laughs> does it all. Hey, yeah, Joe. Thank you. Good job, guys. Thank you. Very nice. Let's get our pictures. It's Mark Thornton. Oh, Thank you. Congratulations. Thanks, sir. Appreciate it. Second place from Fast Forward, oh, McKenna Luther. Congratulations. And in first place with a new record from Claremore Chaos, Claire Pilkington. Woo! Meet her final. In third place from Fast Forward. Jake Brown! Congratulations, Jake. Damn! All right. Well, that's just today, buddy. Yesterday. <laughs> In second place from Infinity Racing, we have Brinsley Berg. And in third place from Fast Forward, boy. we have Fami Gawardafe. What'd you say, boy? Fast Forward. Same as you. Big smile, guys. Hold those mouths up. So there you have it, folks. That's the... Uh, you saw the awards for the long race from our adult divisions as well as the awards from our five to seven boys and girls short race that was just completed. And we are getting ready to continue on in the program uh, with some more short racing here in just a moment while we have a second to have some results to update you on in the 14 to 16 year old uh, men inline 500 meter final. It was Trey Tinsley who ends up taking the bronze after Trey Jones was declassified for impeding. So Tinsley going to get on the podium there in that one. Wire to wire Meyer taking gold and Mason Liebhaber uh, taking the silver. Tinsley now with the bronze. And I do believe we mentioned it at the time, but in our 17 to 19 year old ladies division Jasmine Foster sets a new American Championships record with her 50.274 and Zach Stoppelmore setting a new record as well the fast forward skater coming in at 47.224 so we are just coming to the conclusion of our warm-up period for some of our adult divisions. And we will get back to it. A little preview for you, what's coming up tomorrow. Be sure to tune in. We'll be starting up once again at 8 a.m. Mountain Time. We're going to start things off with two-person relays, a couple of divisions that need heats, and then finals. And after that, uh, those are the two-person, uh, so male and female divisions in those two-person relays. Then we're going to move on to the two-person mixed relays, and we are going to conclude the day Friday with our three-person mixed relay finals. And of course, moving into Saturday, it all leads to the Comcast Race of Champions. More on that later as we can go back to the starting line as our 20 and above ladies are ready to go 
So it's the same four ladies that competed in the long distance race. Kelsey Hellman of Fast Forward, Ashley Hacker from Team Illini, Anissa Beatty of Bell Speed Club, and Hannah Hawley from Olympic Speed. A 500 meter sprint coming at you right now from our 20 and above ladies division. So not sure what the delay was there, but looks like we're ready to go now. And Hellman with a fast sprint out of the block. She's out in front where we would expect her to be. Behind her, Hacker, then Beatty, and Holly, the rookie Hannah Holly out there as well. Hellman continuing to build speed and glide around the turns step by step building her lead over Ashley Hacker Hacker doing the same to Beatty Hellman Hacker then Beatty as you see there the big lead that Hack <coughs> Hellman has built up as she overtakes Holly at the bell so one more lap for Kelsey Hellman and there is Kelsey Hellman crossing the line in first. And back we go as Ashley Hacker and Anissa Beatty cross the line as well. In there you saw Hannah Hawley as she makes her final turn. Kelsey slowing things down. Kelsey Hellman coming in at a 49.594. That looks good enough for a Ameri an American Championships record. So Kelsey Hellman with the gold and the record. Hacker in second. Beatty takes the bronze. There you see again Kelsey Hellman. And she heads off the floor. One more race for her tonight. We'll see her back in the 20 and above ladies middle distance race. See they're getting some coaching from Patty Laser. We'll be seeing Patty shortly in the 50 and above division. But right now it's the 20 and above men, 500 meter inline final. Aiden Saylor, Jonathan Blair, Aaron Geddes, and Big Nick Hoffman out there on the outside. Sailor wanting to get that little bit of an advantage. Takes off too early. We'll take a look at him there. So Aiden Sailor going to have to stare down a yellow card. I think that's the right approach. Don't make eye contact with the yellow card. Just move on. Get yourself back in a good, good headspace so you can get a clean, fast start just like that one. So well done, Mr. Sailor, handling the false start with a plum. Aiden Sailor out in front, tailed closely though by Jonathan Blair and Aaron Geddes. Sailor, Blair, oh, nice move there by Geddes, slipping inside of Blair. Don't think Blair knew he was there. Certainly didn't expect that move. Sailor now driving the feet, pushing the pace. Geddes and Blair up to the task so far. Two laps to go. 
for these three. And that was the bell. Sailor continuing to drive. Aiden Sailor reaching out. And he gets another win. So Aiden Sailor, his best time was his last time, really turning it up there in the final lap. 47-8 for him. 48-096 for Geddes and Jonathan Blair rounds out the podium. Nick Hoffman finishing with a 56-9-8-8. Up next, our 30 and above. Ladies division, the inline 500 meter final. Names we're familiar with by now, Elizabeth Martinko, Shannon Dagenhart, Brooke Cianciola. Five times around the track. And looks like we're ready to go. And out in front quickly goes Martinko. Martinko opening up a huge lead on lap number one. And that's Martinko to the bell. Elizabeth Martinko crossing over the feet, moving quickly around the final turn. And there it is, another gold medal for Martinko. As you see there, Brooke Cianciola on her final lap. And up at the top of your screen, was Shannon Dagenhart crossing the finish line. If we take a look at everyone's final time. Martinko coming in under a minute, 58.202. Very nice time for her as she gets the gold medal. Dagenhart in at 110, Cianciola 116. Now for our 30 and above men's inline 500 meter final. Justin Stelly there on the inside. He was the winner in heat number one. Adam Hudek took the win in heat two. Jared Geddes was second in heat one and Marquebus Humphrey there on the outside. Took uh, second in heat number two, a false start. I do not see Adam Hudek. Looks like he's a late scratch. But the three men on the track are looking to move fast as Stelly way out in front. Geddes and Humphrey. Humphrey now making the pass. Humphrey into second, but he spins out. Jared Geddes goes airborne, but keeps his feet. Unbelievable. Uh, job there by Jared Geddes. Justin Stelly, though, still firmly in control. Jared Geddes going to take probably second as we hear the bell for Justin Stelly. Humphrey moving up to the outside as the fall took him out of contention for anything but bronze as Stelly completes his cool down lap. That was Geddes finishing the race, and there you see Humphreys crossing the line as well. Justin Stelly coming in at a 47.585. Geddes in at 56.790, and Marquevis Humphrey just under a minute, and even with that fall that he took there in the middle lap. 
So up next, we have our 40 and above ladies, 500 meter inline final, Stephanie Baker, Jamie Smith, and Sherry Radaway, the Stallions trio here in the 40 and above ladies division. Stephanie Baker out fast. Sherry Rodaway keeping pace. Jamie Smith running in third. One lap in. Baker starting to stretch out a bit of a lead. See the gap continuing to widen for Stephanie Baker. Two laps, here we go. And here we go. There's the bell for Baker. And Baker sticking the toe out to cross the line. See up at the top was Jamie Smith crossing the line, and we'll take a look at those times. And we see Stephanie Baker with a 58.570. So a nice run by her. It's good enough for a new American Championships record as Stephanie Baker takes down another gold medal. Sherry Rodaway in second, and Jamie Smith for the bronze. Forty and above men up next, 500 meter inline final. Jason Metcalf, Brent Met Merhoff, Brian Smith, and Dan Baglieri. So four different teams represented here. Texas Speed Club with Jason Metcalf, Team Velocity with Brent Merhoff, Brian Smith, Racing for the Stallions and Dan Baglieri from the Aurora Speed Club. Above men are on the track. Merhoff out to an early lead. Metcalf trying to get inside. Looks like he's going to make it. He does slide through there into first place. Jason Metcalf. Merhoff looking to keep pace. Smith and Baglieri hanging in there as well. For the moment, at least, Metcalf turning the screws. Speeding up step by step, lap by lap, building a lead over Brent Merhoff. There is Jason Metcalf to the bell. So very, very good time up uh, for Metcalf. He's on quite a pace, leaving everyone well behind. Jason Metcalf to the line. Merhoff will take second. And it was Baglieri who I think ended up catching Smith late to take third. There you see, indeed it is. Baglieri in third with the 53-9. 52-2 for Merhoff and then Metcalf with a 
50 and above ladies division 500 meter inline final. Tammy Hutto and Patricia Laser. You saw Patricia coaching up Kelsey Hellman after Hellman's victory in her 20 and above 500 meter sprints. Patricia Laser joking around with our starting official as we have encountered some sort of glitch with the timing that's going to cause a bit of a delay. And now looks like we're ready. And quickly off the line goes Laser. Laser out in front of Hutto. Five laps to go in this one. Laser with a nice pace on her first lap. See there is Tammy Hutto. And there's Patricia Laser. So Laser a lap ahead now of Tammy Hutto. And there's the bell for Patricia Laser. And you see there, Laser coming across the line, finishing strong. And Tammy Hutto, one lap left to go. So as she finishes her lap, let's take a look at uh, Patricia Laser's time. Coming in just over a minute, 102.4. So a nice time there by Patricia Laser. And Tammy Hutto finishing her race off as we speak. So there's the time for her. And it looks like that time we showed you the 102 is a new 50 and above ladies record here at the American Championships. So Patricia Laser now in possession of that record. Fifty and above men. They gave us an instant classic in their long race. Have to imagine the short sprint's going to be even more intense as it's just five laps around for Daryl Hunter, Jim Bourgeois, Chuck Boucher, and Chris Daig. And a clean start. Some big time contact there around the first turn. Daryl Hunter gets the better of that. He's out in front, Bourgeois behind him. Fouché in third, Daig running in fourth. Daryl Hunter setting the pace. to go, Hunter and Bourgeois setting up another great finish. Here's the bell. There goes Bourgeois. Bourgeois inside. And he does take the lead. Nice move there. Sliding all the way around the turn. Hunter going to have to try to respond. Can't do it. Jim Bourgeois. 
of champions getting some revenge on Daryl Hunter after losing the photo finish in the long race. You take a look at those final times. This one pretty close as well. Jim Bourgeois in for a new 50 and above men's 500 meter inline final record 53 4 1 8 53 5 9 3 for hunter boucher picking up the bronze for fast forward our 60 and above men's inline 500 meter final mark thornton Thornton on the track, five lonely laps for Thornton on his way to another gold medal. And I have to reiterate uh, what my colleague Josh Ingram pointed out when we uh, watched Mr. Thornton win his first gold medal of the afternoon. Uh, he puts up lap times and has form and speed that makes me believe he could easily compete down a division in the 50 and above. So, an excellent job here by Mr. Thornton, staying motivated with no one else on the track, pushing himself forward, turning in sub 12 second laps. Nice final lap for Thornton. And take a look at his total time in under a minute, 58, 1, 9, 6. So very well done by Mr. Thornton. So while our competitors warm up, for their middle distance finals. We're gonna throw it back down to the trophy room and take a look at all of our juvenile divisions, five through seven through 17 to 19 medal presentations in the short race. For Chaos, Brindley Hines. Woo, Brindley Hines. Brindley. And in second place from Fast Forward, McKenna Luther. Congratulations. And in first place with a new record from Claremore Chaos, Claire Pilkington. Woo! New record. final. In third place from Fast Forward, Jake Brown. Well, that's just today, buddy. Yesterday. <laughs> in second place from Infinity Racing, we have Brinsley Berg. Congratulations. And in third place from Fast Forward, oh, boy. we have Bami Gawardafe. What do you say, boy? Fast Forward. Same as you. Big smile, guys. Hold those mouths up. For the eight to nine boys in line 300 meter final, in third place from Infinity Racing, Thomas Winfield. Congratulations. In second place from the Stallions, Todd Crawford. And in first place, from Fast Forward, Aiden Knowles. Here, I'm just what's you on this stuff. There you are. Mm -hmm. From the Roll Arena Rockets, Lady Ringgold. In second place, from Infinity Racing, Brooklyn Three. Thank you. 
And in first place, in dad manager just in time, Sadana Danison. For the eight to nine boys in line 300 meter final, in third place from Infinity Racing, Thomas Winfield. <laughs> In second place from the Stallions, Todd Crawford. And in first place from Fast Forward, Aiden Knowles. From the Roll Arena Rockets, Lady Ringgold. In second place from Infinity Racing, Brooklyn Three. And in first place, and Dad Manager just in time, Sadana Danison. <laughs> 10 to 11 girls in lines, 500 meter finals. In third place from Allegro Speed, Madison Repke. Yay, from Madison. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff Hopkins. In second place from Infinity Racing, Sage Meek. Yeah. 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 Sage. Why am I the only clapping? Sorry, I'm the only one. In first place from Olympic Speed, Marissa Holly. Woo! Yay! Yeah. Okay, I'll do it. Clap. <laughs> Very good. Nice job. Okay, we're now ready to award. Get you the rest of those medal presentations. <clears throat> Welcome back into the arena proper here at the Xfinity Roller Sports Arena. Uh, we will return to the trophy room and get you all of those award ceremonies. But right now we've got racing to do. Five to seven girls, 500 meter middle distance race on the track. That is McKenna Luther leading Claire Pilkington. Luther and Pilkington, they've been going back and forth all championship long, both competing in the rookie challenge and then again here in the age group. So Luther holding off Pilkington. Typically it's been the other way around. Pilkington out front and Luther giving chase, but this time a turnabout's fair play for McKenna Luther. Two laps to go for the leaders. Also out there on the floor, Brindley Hines, Elena Garber, Cesaria Cooper, and Janaya Washington as we hit the bell for the leaders. That is the bell lap, final lap here. Luther's led it wire to wire. Can she hold off Pilkington around the final turn? It's a drag race to the finish. And Pilkington and Luther skate to skate across the line. We'll have to go to the official result in order to see who comes in first. And it is McKenna Luther, indeed, holding on by three one hundredths of a second uh, over Pilkington. And Brindley Hines coming in third. And I believe that 103.820 put up by McKenna Luther is good enough for a new American Championships record. Back to the starting line we go. Races coming at us fast and furious here in our last distance of the day, the middle distance block, the finals of the five to seven boys inline 500 meter race about to get started. Premi Gawadipe, Brentley Berg, and Jake Brown looking like a false start. Brown's had some false start trouble so far today, but this time it looks like it is Gawardipe who gets the yellow card held up in his face. Uh, 
and another false start. So that's two false starts in a row here for our five to seven boys. try here and a clean start this time as Premi Gowardipe leads the way Brindley Berg in second and Jake Brown giving chase in third position Gowardipe four laps to go he leads it Berg right there with him keeping it close is Brindley Berg Remy Gawadipe now starting to extend his lead, but Brindley Berg still there in position to take advantage if Gawadipe makes a mistake. Gawadipe to the bell. Final lap for Premi Gawardipe. Skating with the cast on his left arm. Hasn't slowed him down one bit as he is on his way to three gold medals here in the five to seven boys division races for today. So a nice job, Premi, well-deserved high five there. His final time, 108. Brindley Berg in at second and 110, and Jake Brown bringing home the bronze with 119. Up next, it's our eight to nine-year-old girls inline 500 meter championship. Sadana Ganasan, Brooklyn Dure, Felan Janjevic, Laney Ringgold, Hadassah Pope, and Olivia Kobe. And a false start called somewhere down inside on the starting line. Might be Ganasan, might be Dure, while the see what the officials say. going to be Ganasan who gets the, the yellow card to the face. And another false start. Not sure who we're going to get uh, assigned this one. Looked like everyone moved pretty much at the same time to me from our tight shot of the skates, but at way outside on the boards, Olivia Kobe of Bell Speed Club flinched just a little bit too early. You can't do that. And a clean start on our third try as Ganasan is out first. DeRay right behind her. Ringgold in third. Kobe tried to make a big move up into fourth. Didn't quite get there as we now see Ganasan and DeRay separating themselves from the rest. Ringgold still trying to hang on, but it is Ganasan. It is DeRay. Three laps to go. They're running one, two. Lady Ringgold skating in third position as this field has strung out all the way around the track. Sadana Ganasan putting up a blistering pace as she hits the bell. Ganasan to the line. A little bit of a stretch. More for show than anything else. And there's a big fist pump. Sadana Ganasan takes the gold and
and sets a new American championship record. Sedona Gunnison. That's what the fist pump was for. 54-5-2-8. Sets the all-time mark to beat here at the American Championships. Duray in with silver at 56-05-7. And Lady Ring. 58, 6, 5, and 9. So everyone on the podium coming in under a minute. Now at the starting line, our 8 to 9 year old boys, 500 meter in line of finalists. The X Man, Xavier Cosme, Aiden Knowles, Todd Crawford, Nathaniel Harmon. Vedant Margale and Remington Klish. They get a clean start. And as we catch up to our racers, Cosme way out in front. Knowles giving chase. It's Cosme, then Knowles, Crawford, and Harmon battling it out for bronze. But it is Cosme and Knowles. Knowles contact there. Bo keeps his feet. Stumble there as Knowles and Cosme hip checking each other around the bend. Both managing to stay upright and continue this battle for a championship. Now Cosme making the move. Knowles can't stop him. One final turn for Knowles. Knowles, Cosme, contact. A lot of contact. Knowles shaking his head. Cosme. Hands up in triumph as he gets the win. Xavier Cosme and Aiden Knowles treating us to some fantastic racing there. Cosme in at a 54, 519. That's a new American Championships record. Aiden Knowles, 55, 1, 1, 0. And then there's Nathaniel Harmon holding off Todd Crawford Jr. for the bronze. And we're going to have our next batch of competitors take a quick little rewarm lap, a little microwave session, just heat up a bit. So we're going to run down to the trophy room real quick, take a look at our 10 and 11 year old girls and boys short race winners. And the little girls in line, 500 meter finals. In third place from Allegro Speed.